Okay, I see Dan Salvucci is just joining us from Whitman, it's a signatory. So, yeah, Dave, David, uh, yeah, 10 o'clock. So, ready? Okay. Right. Welcome, everyone, to a meeting of the old Colony Metropolitan Planning Organization. I'm David Moeller, represent Secretary Tesler here. Consistent with the COVID protocols, we're having this meeting virtually. So, all, call, all votes will be roll call, and the meeting is being recorded. Charlie, you want to call the roll? Yes. Uh, Brockton, Plymouth, Lee Hartman, present. West Bridgewater, Meredith Anderson, here. Whitman, Daniel Salvucci, here. Brockton Area Transit, Michael Lambert, here. Mastot, David Muller, here. Mastot, District 5. Don't see anybody at the moment. Uh, and OCPC, Mary Walter. Here. Okay, so we do have a quorum present. Thank you, Charlie. The next item on the agenda is public comments. Is there anyone from the public who would like to make a comment at this time? If so, please raise your hand and we will call on you. Or speak up and we'll call on you. Seeing and hearing none, if you'd like to make a comment later in the meeting, please let us know and we will call on you. Next uh, item is, uh -huh. yes, Charlie. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, may we go back to um, the call to order and read the accessibility in the Title VI statement? Of course, Charlie, thank you so much. This meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Microphones or telephones will be used by all speakers. If you would like these accommodations, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833, extension 202. Thank you. The Notice of Non-Discrimination Rights and Protections to Beneficiaries with regard to the Federal Title VI Non-Discrimination Protections and the State Non-Discrimination Protections is included on this meeting's agenda, is posted in the conference room, and is available on the Old Colony Planning Council website at www.ocpcrpa.org. Please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833, extension 202, for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, I believe, is the minutes. Yes. So there are, it's the minutes of March 16th, 2021. Can I get a motion and a second from a member and please state your name for the record? Mary yeah, Waldron, all county. Oh, go ahead, Dan. All right. Hey, Dan Sel motion, Dan Salvucci Whitman. Mary Waldron, OCPC, second. Thank you. Any comments, changes, questions, or suggestions? And hearing none, Charlie, call the roll. It's the uh, city of Brockton. Town of Plymouth, Lee Hartman. Accept. West Bridgewater, Meredith Anderson. Approve. Whitman, Daniel Salvucci. Uh, yes. Brockton Area Transit, Michael Lambert. Yes. Mastot, David Muller. Yes. Mastot, Pamela Hasner. Yes. Old Colony Planning Council, Mary Waldron. Accept. Motion passes. Thank you, Charlie. What's next? Next is a report from the Brockton Area Transit. Uh, Michael? Thank you, Chair. Um, three things. One, um, ridership continues about where it has been, between 50 and 60% down. We're hoping uh, with the real good effort that the city has made in terms of um, offering vaccinations to the general public that we'll start to see a, a pickup along with the better weather. Um, on that same topic, I'm happy to announce that um, any Brockton area transit worker who wanted a vaccine has now had at least has had their second shot. Um, that's about 75% of our workforce uh, and we're working on getting the other 25% to uh, come around. Um, on a re related note, we don't have anyone out at the moment, uh, which is excellent. And then uh, finally, and again, on, in terms of good news, we intend to open the VAT Center on May 3rd to the general public. Excellent, thanks Mike. Any questions for Mike? Seeing and hearing none. Next item on the agenda. Is the election of the Old Colony MPO Vice Chairperson. So the current Old Colony Vice Chairperson is Michael Lambert. And we need to, somebody needs to make a motion to um, 
would, I would like that's Mary Waldron. I'd like to make a motion that Michael Lambert serves um, as the vice chairperson. Thank Lee you. Hartman seconds. Thank you. There's a motion and second. Are there any other nominees? Seeing and hearing none. Let's take the vote, Charlie. Sure. Uh, City of Brockton. Town of Plymouth, Lee Hartman. Yes. West Bridgewater, Meredith Anderson. Yes. Whitman, Danielle Salvucci. Yes. Brockton Area Transit, Michael Lambert. Yes. Mastock, David Moeller. Yes. Mastock, Pamela Hasner. Yes. Old Colony Planning Council, Mary Waldron. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Charlie. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. I am honored and humbled. <laughs> We're lucky to have you. Next item, Charlie. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So we have a action item before the MPO today. It's tip amendment number two for the FFY 2021 to 2025 tip. And there are two items with regard to the same project and the project is improvements at the Richard Wilkins Elementary School. It's the Safe Routes to School project in the town of Stoughton. Uh, the, the major change or the amendment here is to increase the program cost from Three, essentially 3.2 million to 4.7 million. And you can see the, the costs specifically on your screen. And there was just a, an adjustment I noticed in the E-STEP just to make sure that we have the correct name of the school and the project title. Originally, this was the West Elementary School in Stoughton. And in recent years, it has changed to the Richard Wilkins Elementary School. So those are the two the items. Um, and on your screen is the actual export from the ESTIP application. And you can see the, the program cost and the variance is essentially increasing by about $1.5 million. Staff has reviewed this uh, in favorable uh, notion and recommend the MPO review and consider release to a public review and comment period and then consider public comments at your next meeting and consider endorsement. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions for Charlie? or messed up. Seeing and hearing none, can we get a motion in a second to release this tip amendment for 21 public day, uh, public comment period and please state your name for the record. Yeah, motion Dan Salbucci Whitman. Lee Hartman, Plymouth second. Thank you. Motion to be made in second. Charlie, please call the roll. Yes, Plymouth Lee Hartman. Yes. West Bridgewater, Meredith Anderson. Yes. Whitman, Danielle Salbucci. Yes. Brockton Area Transit, Michael Lambert for Glenn Geiler. Glenn Geiler for Michael Lambert, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mastock, David Moeller. Yes. Mastock, Pam Hasner. Yes. OCPC, Mary Waldron. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Charlie. Well, what's next on our agenda? Okay. Um, this item is a, the draft federal fiscal year 2022 to 2026 transportation improvement program. Every year about this time, uh, staff here at the OCPC on behalf of the MPO prepares the draft SIFT document in uh, <clears throat> coordination with the communities of the Old Colony Region, MassDOT in Brockton Area Transit. And so what we have for you today is the entire full document for the MPO's review and consideration to a uh, release to a 21 day public review and comment period, uh, after which at your next meeting, you'll hear public comments and then consider any revisions to said document and consider endorsement. Um, so on your screen, we have a quick summary of what this tip entails. As we mentioned earlier, it's five years and approximately $62 million that comprised of 11 road projects and one bridge project in about $45.3 million for the Brockton Area Transit, which includes operational and capital assistance. And on the capital side, it includes the replacement of 20 fixed route buses. I note that the implementation of this tip will help achieve and move towards the achievement of performance metrics and the targets with regard to safety, congestion, system reliability, and importantly also with regard to the state of good repair for the Brockton's Transit Asset Management Plan, um, maintaining their buses in a state of good repair. Um, a quick summary here in Federal 
2, we have two projects. It's the Avon Stoughton Route 24 project for approximately $7.4 million. Project number two is in Pembroke. That's the Route 36 project from Route 27 to Route 14 for approximately $10.2 million. In 23, there is the three projects. The first is Brockton Improvements and Related Work at Center, Cary and Lyman Street. Second project is Stoughton Quarter Improvements on Route 138. I do note that this is an advanced construction project. This is phase one of two. Phase two will be programmed in 2024. And the third project is in Stoughton, the intersection of improvements and related work on Central, Canton, and Tosca Drive. In 24, there's uh, three projects. The first is Route 123 in Brockton at the intersection of Center Street at Plymouth Street, signalization and geometric improvements. The second project is the phase two of the Stoughton Corridor improvements on Route 138. And the third project, uh, last but not least, is in Plimpton. It's the bridge replacement Winnetuxet Road over Winnetuxet River. Moving on to federal 2025, there are two projects. The first is intersection Hello. improvements at- Joy, I'm calling from Compass Radiology. Is this Nancy? No, she's at work. Oh, okay. Can I leave a- Okay, um, so uh, 25, there's Brockton improvements, Lyman Grove and Summer Street and Bridge replacement at the Grove Street Bridge in Brockton. Second project is in Easton. This is a new project to the tip. Uh, this 138 intersection improvements at Elm Street. And this project will adjoin the uh, recently implemented Route 138 Union Street project in Easton. In 26, there are three projects. The first is Abington intersection improvements at Hancock and Chestnut Street. This is a roundabout installation. The second project is signal in installation at Route 3 ramps, uh, northbound, southbound at Route 3A in Duxbury. This is the exit 10 location. And a new project to the tip uh, in this go around is the Hanson Quarter improvements on Route 14 McQuan Street from Pembroke Town Line to Indian Head Street. Now due to the cost of this project exceeding the regional target and the estimate that the project will span at least two, two construction years, we're advanced constructing this project. Um, phase one is in 26 and phase two will be in 27. And at this point, um, these are the East of printouts. If there's any questions, I point out one of the, the really nice things um, there, as there are many about the East of application is it actually includes a fiscal constraint analysis right in the printout. So right in the middle of your screen, you can see the line that says total programmed for old colony region projects. And then right below that, there's a line that shows the program target. So there's a almost instantaneous fiscal constraint analysis right on within the tip itself. Those were panning through this. If there's any questions from the panel? Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? Seeing none. And then we have the uh, Brockton Area Transit section. And Glenn would be willing to say a, a word or two about this section. Absolutely, Charlie. Thank you for that great um, overview of our program. Um, just a there are very few changes from the last time this group uh, took a look at this plan. Um, we have focused our efforts on um, keeping our fleet in a state of good repair. Uh, so there's a large, um, the largest focus is on bus replacement, the continuation of our vehicle overhaul program that has been very successful um, in keeping our buses um, in, uh, in good condition and, and on the road. Um, we also have some other improvements um, to our facilities, our maintenance facility. We have a parking garage, uh, our intermodal center, um, and our administrative offices. Um, there are uh, safety enhancements um, to our maintenance facility and the replacement of our um, the third phase of our bus lift um, replacement project. And we've also um, we also have a couple projects in here. Um, Michael would uh, speak more eloquently to this, but it is um, giving us capacity to explore based on a couple studies that we have going on, um, fleet electrification in the future um, and, so, and, and other, um, other improvements like that. So 
I would be happy to answer any questions if someone had a question about a specific project. Thank you. Do any members have any questions for either the RTA, MassDOT, or Charlie on the draft tip? Seeing none, can we get a motion and a second to release this for a 21 day public review and comment period? And please state your name for the record. A motion, Dan Salvucci, Whitman. Mary Waldron, Old Colony Planning Council. Thank you, Charlie. Motion has been made and seconded. Please call the roll. Yes, Plymouth Lee Hartman. Lee? I think he's muted. Yes, sorry. Thank you. West Bridgewater, Meredith Anderson. Yes. Whitman, Daniel Salvucci. Yes. Procton Area Transit, Glenn Geiler. Glenn Geiler for Michael Lambert, yes. Mass Talk, David Moeller. Yes. Mass Talk, Pam Hasner. Yes. Old Colony Planning Council, Mary Waldron. Yes. Motion passes, unanimous. Thank you, Charlie. What's next? Charlie, if I may uh, interrupt before the next um, item, we have an unidentified caller with a uh, phone number beginning in 508 and ending in 000. Could you please unmute yourself and uh, identify yourself for our records for our meeting minutes? Um, I believe that that might be Linda Sacchetti from BAT. I'm not sure if she's able to unmute herself. I think it's star six to unmute or star nine. Star six. Star six. Lee, you had your oh. hand raised. No, I, uh, if I did, I did not mean to. Somehow, I, <laughs> I think I was looking at the, uh, trying to find the information on unmuting. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just reflect in the records that we made an attempt and were unable. And uh, Glenn, if you are uh, able to here, verify here if... Go. No, we're good. Who, who is it now? I'm, I'm sorry, it's Linda Sacchetti from Brockton Area Transit. Very Thanks, good. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. You're welcome. So the next item on the agenda is the self-certification compliance statement. Is this you, Charlie? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, this agenda item might look strangely familiar to the, an agenda item at your last meeting, which you heard a presentation from me on this uh, said topic. Um, so I uh, offer humble apology because I actually left one of the lines out and I credit uh, Ben Muller for, for catching that. Um, so thank you, Ben. Um, so what we have for you today was what I believe to be an accurate uh, self-certification compliance statement with all uh, 11 items. Um, so on an annual basis, we present this to the MPO for its review and due consideration. And essentially what it talks about is how the MPO will comply with the uh, Title 23 US Code 134 and, and then also the um, section 49 US code 5303, which is a metropolitan planning process for the two different on, on the federal highway side and then on the FTA side. But then we go into the Clean Air Act amendments on, in item two. And then the, the majority of the rest is about uh, operating your uh, transportation planning process in a non-discriminatory manner with regard to age, sex, disability. Uh, there's an anti-lobbying lobbying pr provision in here. And then item six is the one that I had omitted in the, uh, the last go around. And that's the provision about providing a equal opportunity program on federal and federal aid construction projects. So these are the 11 in total. So this is an action item for the MPO's review and due consideration. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions for Charlie? Seeing none, can we get a motion and a second to approve this as presented today? And please state your name for the record. I'll motion Dan Salvucci Whitman. Second, Mary Lee Hartman. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Charlie, please call the roll. Yes, Plymouth Lee Hartman. Yes. West Bridgewater, Meredith Anderson. Yes. Whitman, Daniel Salvucci. Yes. Brockton Area Transit, Glenn Geiler. Michael Lambert, yes. 
Nasdaq David Moeller? Yes. Nasdaq Pam Hasner? Yes. Old Colony Planning Council, Mary Walder? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Charlie. What's next? So we have uh, administrative matters, other business and date and time of next meeting. So on your screen, there are three upcoming meetings uh, of the Old Colony MPO, May 18th at 10 o'clock, June 15th at 10 a.m. and July 20th, if need be, at uh, 10 a.m. We ask the MPO members review these dates and offer any uh, modifications that you might have at this point. Otherwise, if there are no changes, we ask that the members uh, save these dates. Thank you, Charlie. Any other items to come before the MPO today? So I do have a quick one. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but they are preparing a new transportation bill in Congress. This is separate from the giant infrastructure bill. This is a reauthorization. And as part of that, the House committee has agreed to reinstitute the earmarking process. So you may, if you're a city or town, you may have been contacted by your congressional member about um, projects to be earmarked. Part of the requirement is if you earmark a project that is not on the tip, you need a, a letter from the chair of the NPO that the project can get on the tip within a reasonable time frame. Just so everybody knows, when we get that request, we're looking at readiness and um, funding, total funding to make sure the project is fully funded and it's not an earmark that's only gonna fund half a project. So just to let everybody know that we will, the, the deadline for those, those um, submittals, I believe is Friday. So that's why I'm giving everybody the heads up today because we won't have another meeting. If we had a list of projects, we'd bring you a list of projects and say, hey, these are the projects that are being earmarked, but we don't. So we're making do as best we can. Any questions? Yes, Charlie. Uh, yes, so a uh, question about the timing of uh, a reference of which tip and stip if say a staff member from a congressional office asks what stip is it in, in words, we only have one step at a time and we realize we're doing it, going through the whole process now and the project in an application might not be reflective of the cost going forward in the new stip. Right, so that's, that's a very difficult question because they're being asked today or by Friday if it's in the tip. So the the tip they're being asked for is the tip that is going to expire with the adoption of the new tip in uh, by October 1st. So they're going to certify it's in the current tip. We, we're asked if it can make it, if it's not in the current tip and we're asked, can it make it into the next tip? That's the tip we'll be looking at. And basically what, for us again, what that means is, can it be ready in the next five years? And is it fully funded with the year mark and the match? Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Pam Hasner has her hand raised. Hey, Pam. Hi, Dave. Um, I just wanted to clarify, do all of these proposals have to be approved projects or uh, by PRC? Well, so not technically by the federal regulate requirements. As part of our analysis of whether it can get into the TIP in a reasonable time, which again, what we're assuming that means is can it be ready for advertisement in the next tip cycle? So the next five years. One of the things we'll consider is has it been approved? Is it in the system? Okay. I, I concur with that. I just wanted to double check. Thank yep. you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, can I get a motion and a second to adjourn and please state your name for the record? Uh, motion, Dan Salbucci with me. Is there a second? Lee Hartman, second. Without objection, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank Great you. Job. See you